Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be investigating a kind of a interesting phenomenon, specifically in relation to science fiction movies where a deadly asteroid approaches Earth and we use nuclear weapons to destroy it. Let's actually play around in Universe Sandbox and discover what actually happens to asteroids that might collide with Earth if we decide to explode a nuclear weapon on it. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So as you can see in this simulation, there's quite a lot of near-Earth asteroids, basically asteroids that might one day collide with Earth because they do kind of share relatively similar orbits. Uh, so far in the next few hundred years, we're actually pretty safe, but there are a few asteroids that have caused panic in the past. Obviously movies like Armageddon often talk about this impending uh, collision with, er with Earth and a large asteroid that can destroy the entire civilization, but uh, these don't actually happen as often as the movies make, make them out to be. Specifically here, uh, we're actually going to be talking about large asteroids over 5 kilometers in radius that may potentially cause an extinction event. Now what we're going to do in this simulation is we're going to actually launch a few asteroids at our beautiful planet and discuss nuclear weapons as a potential deterrent to such an event. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to open a simple simulation with just the Earth and the Moon and basically talk about what Universe Sandbox allows us to do. So first of all, there's actually a really cool tool called Explosion, which I often use in, in the videos. And as you can see here, it actually automatically selects a kind of an explosion energy that you need to explode something. So for example, to explode the moon that's right there, you would need to have 6 million, 6.7 million uh, Shoemaker Levi uh, comets launched directly at the same spot. Basically, it's, it would be energy equivalent to this. In other words, it's similar to launching 2.7 times 10 to the power of 15 Hiroshima bombs. Or, uh, 4 times 10 to the power of 13 megaton or 0 0.000000001 uh, energy of a supernova. In other words, this is a pretty cool tool that allows you to kind of look at how much energy is needed to destroy something and specifically to launch those particles at that, at that specific speed. So for example, for our planet Earth, we would need to have an energy equivalent to 7 times 10 to the power of 16 megaton uh, just to launch the particles of Earth at the speed of about 10 kilometers per second. So quite a lot of energy. And actually, uh, Scott Manley covered the specific energy required to destroy Earth in one of his videos, and I'm actually going to explain it in a little bit more detail in one of the future videos, but today we're only going to be focusing on the asteroids. And here we're only going to be focusing on destroying those asteroids using nuclear weapons. Now, we're, in, we're, we're really only going to talk about one nuclear weapon, the most powerful nuclear bomb ever exploded, specifically somewhere, somewhere, somewhere right here in North Russia, um, it's basically a bomb that was the biggest bomb ever, it was called Tsar Bomba. Um, you can kind of look at the video right here in the a, in a corner of your screen. But uh, what this bomb was, was essentially a hydrogen bomb with a total yield of approximately 50 megaton. So let's, uh, well first of all, let's see how some of these comets will actually handle this. Let, let's launch Let's launch Apophis, it's a relatively small asteroid and uh, it's only about uh, 162 meters in radius. It approached uh, our planet relatively close, it caused some fear that they might collide with us. Um, and let's, let's pretend that Apophis is coming. We're gonna launch it at our planet Earth and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, explode Apophis. We're gonna explode it pretending that a 50 megaton nuclear weapon was launched at it before it destroyed uh, part of our planet. And so here, we're going to go to explode, disable this, and go into Megaton and enter the value of 50. And so here we go, and what we're going to do now is basically just explode uh, Apophis with that energy of 50 Megaton right around now. So there's that explosion, we're going to slow it down to real time. And it's, imagine basically it's a nuclear weapon colliding with Apophis and causing this tremendous destruction. And look at that, it just kind of evaporates almost instantly. 
So a powerful bomb like Tsar Bomba would basically kind of completely annihilate Apophis. The particles would actually most likely evaporate and be spread across a very large area, but as you can see there's still some something left in the middle and not everything would actually evaporate. And what's even more interesting is that you get this really really large fireball that the game creates that might actually cause a bug in the game, but I don't know if it's going to cause anything when it collides with planet Earth. So let's actually examine this uh, in a little bit more detail by launching slightly larger asteroids, the ones that might actually cause a bit of a fear and scare when it comes to... Ooh, look at that, it just disappeared. Apophis is gone. So I don't think anything will be actually colliding with our planet. There's a few fragments coming, and oh my god, look at that. So this is actually what I really wanted to show you guys. So, the destruction of Apophis has created this tremendously widespread destruction across the planet. That's because we just literally exploded an asteroid spreading its total mass over a very, very large area. And instead of making all of these little asteroids um, evaporate in the air, we now created a very, very kind of a shotgun effect. It, it collided everywhere causing mini explosions everywhere. And the thing is, uh, even if, if it enters atmosphere, it's still going to deliver all this energy that we would have had otherwise, and essentially warm up our atmosphere and uh, create quite a lot of uh, energetic explosions. So, okay, that was Apophis. That was very, very small. Only 100-something meters, right? Let's do something a little bit bigger. Let's let's go with a slightly bigger object, like, a, for example, a comet. Let's, let's do Halley's Comet. 5.5 kilometers in radius going at the speed of 10 kilometers per second and actually no the comets move faster comets move around 40 to 60 kilometers uh, per second let's do 67 and launch it right there do the same thing and basically imagine Halley's comet approached us a little bit too close and it's not going to collide with our planet earth so as an emergency we launch a tremendous amount of nuclear missiles total yield of those missiles is 50 megaton similar to the Tsar Bomba and they collide with uh, Halley's Comet it starts exploding and unfortunately that power was not enough to do much damage nothing seems to have uh, evaporated or left anywhere it just basically heated it up so now all of the superheated material and radioactive material on top of that is going to be landing somewhere in Mexico and here it comes. And, oh, look at that. I found a bug in the game. It just kind of passed through our planet Earth. All right. But technically, this would have been an explosion. Oh, yeah, there you go. There is that explosion right there. Created a very, very large, tremendously powerful explosion right there. And it's going to basically cause quite a lot of damage. And so that was uh, just one of the comets. Let's just for fun add one more. Let's do Swift Tuttle. It's a lot larger. It's 13 kilometers in size. And we're going to launch it from a little bit farther away, making this slightly more realistic. So it's going to be coming from here. We're going to explode it once again using 50 megaton nuclear explosion and just observe what happens as a result. And this one actually spins quite a lot too. And so some of the particles started evaporating. Here's that fireball. And let's see if anything is left by the time it gets to our planet Earth. And here we go. Three, two, one. And it's still there. But also so are these fragments that have been exploded away from the, uh, the comet. And they're going to be entering our planet in different locations, creating quite a tremendous amount of... Um, energy and explosions all across this area. Alright, so this time it actually passed through the planet once again without causing any damage. But that's just actually a bug in... Oh, no, there it is. There's that damage. It's a bug in the game, but it still damaged the planet quite a lot. So as you can see, exploding an asteroid in or above the planet actually is not a very good idea. Not because it's not going to stop it, not because it's not going to destroy it, but because it's going to spread the damage over a much, much, much wider area. One solution, I guess, would be to try to split it in half and have two halves move around the planet like it did in Armageddon. But 
the chance of doing that, or actually the ability to do that, is practically impossible. It would be very difficult to split the asteroid specifically in two halves and have them fly around the planet. It just doesn't work that way. Asteroids are not dense enough to, to be just split like that. And so for this reason, exploding asteroids with nuclear weapons in order to save Earth is not a very smart idea. We can, we can try to redirect them using maybe some sort of a solar energy or maybe even nuclear explosions. Hey, look at that, there's another explosion right there. Um, but just launching an, um, a nuclear weapon and trying to destroy a comet, for example, using this nuclear weapon is really, really bad. It's just going to cause destruction no matter what you do. So there is a Halley Comet, if it collided with Earth, and as you can see, the destruction that is going to cause... Oh, okay, maybe this is a little bit more, looks a little bit more dramatic, but the actual shock wave is, is less than it was when it, it was spread across a wider area. So in that sense, it's actually better not to touch them, let them collide with Earth instead, unless you can redirect them. So hopefully you learned something from this video, and because I wanted to actually just talk about this, and in one of the future videos we'll talk about the idea of exploding moons and planets and other objects, and talk about the energy required and how it can actually be achieved. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, let's explore our planet before we end this video, and come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon, because it does help me create better videos and make this more entertaining for you guys. Oh, look at that. My explosion is not working and that's because I forgot to reset it to automatic energy. And there we go.